Jerry Potampo from the RL Dental Company. Today we're going to discuss maximum pressures in your expansion tanks. So let's talk about maximum pressure. Here is a screenshot from the Bell & Gossett ESP System-Wise Expansion Tank Selection Program. In part two of this series, we discuss the fill pressure. In addition to fill pressure, the maximum tank pressure is also needed for tank sizing. One of the purposes of the expansion tank is to keep the system's pressure under control. In other words, it's the tank's job to keep the relief valve from opening. So let's start by discussing relief valve pressures. The main purpose in the life of a pressure relief valve is to relieve system pressure if that pressure starts to build too high. Relieving this excess pressure protects the equipment in the system as well as the people in the building. What we're talking about is hydronic relief valves today, which are not like plumbing relief valves. A plumbing valve will pop open when its setting is reached. Hydronic relief valves will actually start to weep at about 10% less than the set point. So a 50 pound valve starts to open at 45 psi. Now the question is, what pressure setting do we need? The setting is determined one of two ways. First, it's given to you. The relief valve on some boilers have one or two options. You might see this on smaller residential type boilers that are traditionally set at 30 psi. The second is your given choices. This is most common with the majority of the commercial boilers we see today. When you have this situation you need to know where the relief valve is located. Most commonly we pump away from the relief valve. However, there could be situations where we pump into a relief valve. Let's look at a couple of examples to help make the point. This example shows us pumping away from the relief valve and has a list of steps to also help us determine the pressure setting. What we have to do is determine what piece of equipment has the lowest pressure rating and where it's located in the system. The lowest rated item might be a terminal unit or a control device out in the system. In our example, we're going to say that a valve at the discharge of the pump is rated for 125 psi. So that is what we need to protect. We cannot allow that valve to see more than 125 pounds of pressure. If we assume our pump has a 50 psi shutoff head at full speed, which is the worst case scenario, we can see that we need less than 75 pounds on the inlet of the pump to avoid having more than 125 pounds at the valve. Next, that relief valve will start to weep at 90% of its setting, so we want to give ourselves a 10% buffer. To do that, we need to subtract 10% from 75 psi. That gives us a maximum pressure at the relief valve of 67.5 pounds. We would then select a standard relief valve setting below 67.5 psi. It's best to stay with standard settings whenever it's possible. So maybe we use a 50 psi or 40 psi, 45 psi setting. This will also be the maximum pressure at the expansion tank. Now if we move the relief valve to the discharge, we see that the pressure setting will be higher maybe like 100 psi. The point to all of this is to understand that you have to work through pressures in, or in the system to see how they relate to where the relief valve is placed. This will help you nail down the pressure relief valve setting. In the previous examples, one of the items to consider was the elevation of the tank in relation to the relief valve. Gil Carlson from Bell & Gossett, who wrote the engineering design manual, was fond of saying, a difference to be a difference has to make a difference. If the relief valve is within a couple of feet of the tank, you can consider them to be at the same elevation. There really isn't going to be enough pressure change to make a difference. Now, if the tank is at the top of the building, you definitely need to take that change in elevation into account. So now that we know the pressure setting, how do we select the valve? This chart shows what information we need to know in order to select the relief valve. We need to know two items, the pressure setting, which we just calculated, and the system capacity. The capacity part is pretty easy. The valve needs to be sized to handle the BTU per hour load of the system. For example, if we determine that we wanted a 50 pound relief valve, and our heating system had 4.5 million BTUs per hour worth of boilers, we would need to use the 3301-50 valve. You can see that the bronze body 790 and 1170 valves don't quite get us the capacity we need, and the iron body 4100 is much more than we need. Now, just because you can use a 50-pound valve doesn't mean you should. Why run the system at high pressures if you don't have to? Glycol can leak through NPT connections at higher pressures, and water can leak too. 
This is a bit of a trial and error. Try the 50 pounds for your tank size, then try 45 or 30. The higher the setting, the smaller tank. This gives you the ability to try to make your tank fit the available space. But do give yourself a little wiggle room for safety. Hopefully this helps you determine what your maximum pressure should be in your tank. In part four of this series, we will be discussing thermal expansion. This concludes our presentation today. Thank you for your time, and please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions.